didn't look like he was going to City, I don't think they would have would they would have signed him. That's why you're not a pundit. Yeah. When he rejoined Manchester United, it looked like he was joining City. But a tweet of yours sent everybody into a frenzy. How much did you know at that point? <laughs> I think my smile on that that tweet let everybody know that I was kind of in the know of what was going on. Yeah, obviously I, I'd, I'd spoken to him that night, so the night before, so I had an understanding of the situation. There seemed to be. I mean, you said you spoke to him on the phone. There was there was reports of other conversations. You know, Patrice Evra, I think, posted something similar about a conversation he had with Ronaldo. Apparently, Sir Alex Ferguson had a role. How much of this charm offensive was kind of orchestrated, or was it all just off the cuff? We can't let him go to City. No, well, well Cristiano rang me. I didn't. I didn't ring him. So like, so he is. We spoke and stuff, and there was a bit of back and back and forth and other conversations with other people, at the club and stuff, but. Listen, I think anybody connected with Man United, the thought of him pulling on a Man City shirt was like enough to, to make you want to run and jump off a cliff. It was crazy. So people were thinking, can you, can, can you speak to him? Can people get hold of him? And I think it's, it's just a case of all the fans would have been the same. No one wanted to see him go. If he came back to the Premier League, why is he going to go anywhere else but Man United? Well, how much would it, have, would it have affected his legacy as a United legend, had he gone to City, would do you think fans would have been understanding as painful as it would have been? I think that's one of the. Ronnie's not like he's not a, he's not an idiot. He's, he's he's an intelligent guy. Do you know what I mean? You don't do what he's done in his career without having some form of intelligence, and he understood that immediately. I think just our conversations, um, the idea of his legacy was definitely part of the conversation. Now, obviously, United didn't really enter the picture. To, uh, in, into this picture of signing Ronaldo until it looked like he was on the verge of joining City. So how fair would it be to say that United have signed him more out of pride than a rational investment in the squad? Do you know what I mean? Like, they just couldn't let him go there, so they had to sign him. Is that, is that, is that your view? That's kind of how it comes across to me. Like, I don't think... If, if it didn't look like he was going to City, I don't think they would have, would, they would have signed him. What do you reckon? That's why you're not a pundit. Yeah. <laughs> but, like... People were saying this type of madness, yeah, but this guy, he was a top goal scorer in, the, in, the, in Serie A last season. So, mm. I'm not saying if, if Man United anymore. are buying the, the top goal scorer in, in Serie A, it can't be like, oh, we're only going to buy him because someone else has bought him. It, it makes sense. He's going to get you goals. Social media following's gone through the roof. The share price went through the roof immediate, immediately, broke records with shirt sales. So financially, even when you forget about on the field, Financially, it made sense, but the overriding factor is, as a football player, is he still good enough? It's not in question. Like Mason Greenwood and Marcus Rashford, for it, just them alone, it's a great investment for Man United just for them to, because if if they learn anything of him and and they become better players, better professionals, it, it, it ups their levels again, that means that they actually might end up saving Man United money in the long run. They don't have to then go out and, and buy maybe a Haaland if Greenwood learns off someone like Cavani and Ronaldo now and all of a sudden becomes an absolute monster, which he seems to be on his way to doing anyway.